So that being the case, you would also see changing behaviour from the shoppers in your supermarkets. There'd be some things they'd be buying more of, there'd be some things they'd be buying less of. So this is part of the issue because, of course, a lot of people have got the vibe, the feel that prices have gone up uh, and they, they, they seem to want someone to blame and it seems to me that government does the same thing. Yeah, look, it is a, a little bit, I think, passing the buck down. The government wanted the pressure taken off them. Uh, the banks went through it many years ago, as you'll recall. I think it's uh, the supermarket uh, supermarket's turn. And, look, I don't know all the wherefores and whyfores of the details that sit behind Coles and Woolies contracts, but I know in our model, I mean, for example, we're in the produce markets in Victoria every day of the week. We pay the market price on the day and we reflect our retail price based on the cost of goods that we purchase. So we are very much in tune with the market. There are prices up, there are prices down. It's really a daily occurrence. And the same happens with things like meat and small goods. So uh, I, 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 I do have concerns that this fine, as you say, or this approach is potentially not necessarily going to reduce prices. It might stabilise prices or, if anything, maybe increase prices in the longer term. So just take me through this because leaving aside fresh, which of course is highly cyclical and bit depending on weather and a whole bunch of things, take me to processed foods, food manufacturers in Australia. They've clearly got higher prices for electricity, higher prices for wages, higher prices for transport. And so they're wanting you to reflect that in the prices that you are charging the customers. How does that negotiation go with them? Oh, look, I mean... As I said, we buy most of our product through uh, Metcash. Metcash are our wholesalers, so uh, we then buy a lot of products such as direct lines and uh, fresh lines through the supplier. So ultimately, we get given a price list and we base our retail price off that price list. In saying that, we also are very conscious of our pricing with Woolies, Coles, Aldi, because we need to be very price competitive in the market. Uh, we can't uh, have ourselves outpriced, so to speak. So. We're, as independents, more price competitive today than we have probably been at any stage in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, and that's because I think the manufacturers themselves, they also want to see independents grow, prosper and thrive. So they do support us. They give us great deals that allows us to promote weekly, regularly at very aggressive prices. And uh, I think the whole industry is calling out for perhaps more independence and more competition more players rather than just a lineup of chain stores that you can often see in certain suburbs. Our, our, my biggest drive has been, Ross, to try to say that it's really the property that's causing part of the issue. Too many Coles, woolly stores line up next to each other and in turn that just takes away the stores that are competing in the market. And I'll give you a real live example. At Milton in Queensland. Milton in Queensland a suburb just out of Brisbane, there were two Coles and two Woolly supermarkets and an excellent independent operator, an IGA operator there. He was in a shopping centre, was in there for many, many, many years and had a very successful business. He tried to renew his lease. Uh, he found that Coles had purchased the centre and all of a sudden he's in a position now where his lease was not re renewed and instead a Coles supermarket is going to go into his site in a bigger expanded box at Milton, you'll end up with three Coles and two Woolies. The IGA, who was a clear point of difference, very competitive, a fantastic range, disappears. They're the sorts of issues. It's the mergers law, the acquisition law that needs to be looked at more closely. I think the fines on their own aren't going to change the world. It's not going to radically change, because no one's going to go out and necessarily uh, do the wrong thing in that regard. It's, to me, how do we get more uh, competitors, retailers, in a certain area rather than just have the chain stores lined up? I'll tell you what's interesting because, of course, quite clearly this week, the Treasurer also talked about more powers for the ACCC over mergers and acquisitions. So that's another one that's sitting there. But just take me back to that particular example you've given me. Does that also suggest that a mandatory code that Craig Emerson is recommending is potentially a good thing versus the voluntary code that's currently in place? Well, the mandatory code is with behaviour with uh, suppliers. So, yes, I think it's a step in the right direction, but it's just 
one isolated platform. I think it needs to come with what I said, say a competition check. And if you're in a market where there's a significant number of Woolies and coal stores, a market check should be done. And if all of a sudden there is too many or a significant number of chains in that area, if a landlord is trying to develop a new site or wants to uh, bring in a supermarket, the ACCC should have the power and authority to say no, the competition shows that you're well represented in the area. We need either an IGA, a Foodworks, an Aldi, another player. Because one thing we know, Ross, where there's a number of banners of supermarkets, four or five different competitors, people are now buying more and more promotions. And our promotions will be different to Woolies, who's different to Coles, who's different to Aldi. So the more cheaper prices or promotions, the more the offer, that's how we're going to get consumer pricing down. Well, I can see right behind you that I think it's the mandarins that are on, on special right behind you right now. So quite clearly, you've actually got, uh, you know, the, the emphasis is there, as you say, in a cost of living crisis that people will buy the specials. Absolutely. We're seeing our promotional sales go through the roof. One of the great things about IGA is that we're famous for our specials. And in this tough market, we're seeing our special sales increase significantly. But our specials are different to Woolies, are different to Coles. If this was just another Woolies or just another Coles, we've got Woolies and Coles in this market now in Caram Downs. All it's going to be is more of the same. The Chief Executive of Richie's uh, Supermarkets, many thanks for your time today. Cheers.